Wow, that's really impressive. I think at this point, a lot of you know that I really like lasers. And I think the word's gotten out because the people at our tour reached out to me and sent me this. This is their Alfero Laser 2, which is a diode laser. Something a little bit different than I'm used to experimenting with. This laser features a 390 millimeter cutting area, which if you don't know math or know how to use Google search, comes out to about a 15 inch square cutting area and runs along these aluminum rails with these stepper motors attached. It also features a four and a half watt diode laser, which I mentioned before that I don't have any experience with, but I'm really excited about trying this out because it does work different than a CO2 laser and you do get really different results. So I'm gonna go ahead and start putting this together so we can put it through its paces and see what this is all about. Out of the box, almost everything is put together. The motor's already attached and the rails are fairly complete for the most part. I think you just have to screw the ends together, which probably shouldn't take too long. So let's go ahead and get this put together so we can start it up. Let's do it. I think I got it. So the lasers all put together and it went really fast. I think it was about 20, maybe 25 minutes just to get everything together. And that's mainly because I kept referring to the build video they had on their website, which was really helpful. And it showed just the basics. I think there's about eight bolts that had to go in, some cable management and plugging in the stepper motors, as well as setting up the laser diode on its gantry. And it was really easy. I don't think there were even any written instructions that were needed to put this together. So let's take a look at what we have. One of the things I really like about this laser unit right now is that it's a lightweight aluminum construction. It's strong, it's sturdy, and it stays really square. But the other thing is that you can hang it on the wall if you need it out of the way, if you need to make room. And you can also just throw it over your shoulder and, you know, take it to a party. Yeah, maybe don't do that. A Ferret Laser 2 has a cutting area of about 390 millimeters by 390 millimeters or 15 by 15 if you never bothered to learn metric. The system also has an updated motherboard and firmware with the safety shutoff if the power input is over a normal range, which is pretty good with an open air laser. There's three different laser modules to choose from, which these units right here can be changed out. There's the LU2-4, the LU2-SF, and the LU2-LF. Now what that means is you have three different options for the work that you're gonna be doing. The four is considered kind of like the basic model the uh, short focus that I have right here is optimized for engraving, although it will cut. And then the LF is a long focus that actually allows for the cutting of a little bit thicker material and also allows for the addition of an air assist as well. One of the things I really like about this is that this is interchangeable with the two other models that I had mentioned before. And it is really easy to take off and replace. It slides off really easy like that. You have your little shroud right here that is just held on by these magnets and just kind of snaps on. And, and you only have two attachment wires right here. You have a ground and then you have the power and data that goes into the laser right there. The other thing I like with the system is it simply just slides on. The shroud snaps on, but even more so, is the way that you focus it. Orchard includes this little spacer right here, and this ensures that you get the appropriate focal distance every time. And all you do is put it down on top of the workpiece that you're going to cut or engrave, move it over the top, drop it down, 
tighten the adjustment screw, slide that out, and you're focused. No special sensors, no cameras, and it's pretty consistent every time. In a lot of cases, I like that method of focusing. I know this consistent, I can physically interact with it, and I don't have to wait for a camera or some other interpretation of what is considered focused. It's done, and it's ready to go. Now that we got all the technical info out of the way, let's see what this can do. Before I fire up the laser to engrave and cut, let's talk really quick about software. With a laser like this, with the Alfaro Laser 2, you have two primary choices for the software to use. The first is a paid piece of software called Lightbird. It runs about $60 and has a ton of features for all your cutting and engraving. And it's probably also the most popular piece of software out there used for people in their shops with their lasers, um, as long as the laser supports it, which this one does. The other piece of software is a free piece of software that I'll be using called Laser GRBL. Laser Garble, Laser Gerbil. How are you supposed to say it? laser gerbil. Anyways, I'll be using laser GRBL to do most of my tests. It does engraving and cutting just fine. It is limited on some of its functions, but it does everything that I need it to to run my initial tests. To get started with my engraving and cutting, Ortura sent out a sample box of materials that this laser can cut and engrave, such as fiberboard, sometimes also called MDF, three millimeter plywood, black acrylic, stainless steel, wasn't expecting that, leather and denim. So we're gonna run several of these materials through, test them out and see the results. I ran my first test and I have to say I'm pretty impressed. The material that I'm probably most familiar with engraving is plywood, especially three millimeter plywood. And I like doing a lot of like animal stuff or photos. And this came out really well. I probably could have pushed the settings a little bit more, but since it's my first time using the laser, I just picked a starting point and the result was pretty good. One of the things that I noticed is that I'm able to get a lot darker values in this than I am with other lasers, especially like CO2 lasers at times. This came out really good. Something I really haven't tried engraving before, but I wanted to test it here was doing leather. And it's mainly because leather has a very um, interesting and strong smell when you engrave it. But I tested it, it came out really well, especially that tiger there. Another thing I really like is that it cut through three millimeter plywood, which isn't always the case with some other lasers. I won't mention any names, but the result was pretty good. It's just a small test but I only had to do one pass. I had to run it a little bit slower, but I think that was completely worth it to get a nice, clean cut. Besides plywood, one of my favorite things to engrave is tiles using something called the Norton White Tile Method. And you have a permanent engraving on the tile. It doesn't wipe off. It is permanent onto the surface. And the diode laser did it perfectly. The thing that I'm probably most impressed with, because I didn't know this was possible, was to mark stainless steel. They say engrave, but I think engrave, they say engrave, but I think calling it engraving might cause a little bit of a tizzy with some people because it's really not vaporizing the surface, at least not enough to, to really tell. But it is marking it dark enough that you can use it for a lot of different applications. Check that out. That's impressive. So now that all the testing is done, I've been able to run it on different materials, different settings, and trying different types of cutting and engraving. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of feedback that I've noticed uh, with this laser. So first of all is I would recommend this laser. I think it is a great entry level laser for anybody that is curious about laser cutting and laser engraving. There's a lot of choices out there and not just between different companies and different laser models, but you have fiber lasers, you have diode lasers, and you have CO2 lasers. Each one specializing in something a little bit different. And they vary a lot in their cost. And it's asking a lot for somebody just to shell out several thousand dollars for a laser system that they really don't have any experience with, especially if they don't have any experience with 
any kind of production automation, which is a category that I think this would fall into. So I think this is the perfect starting spot for anybody curious about lasers. That about wraps it up for this episode. Thank you so much for following this all the way to the end. I hope the information was helpful. I know that I've had several people reach out to me asking me about recommendations for lasers. And depending on your need, you're gonna have a different recommendation every time. But if you're looking entry level, if you're looking just to get your feet wet, I definitely recommend the Ortura Alfero Laser 2. Thanks for watching. I do have more content coming out. I have about three or four more videos I actually have to get started on right after I finish this one. So I don't wanna keep any longer. And I hope to see you next time. So just a couple last items to close out. I do have a Patreon. Any contributions to the channel are extremely welcome, especially if you're in a position to do so. I also have a shop with t-shirts and different items, especially check out my Lasers Are Cool shirt. It's one of my favorites, and I probably should be wearing it right now. In fact, let me switch. Oh, that's better. So Lasers Are Cool, I have shirts like this and others in the shop. Any purchases really help out the channel, as do your views. I have a lot of videos in our back catalog, Go ahead and check out all the past videos. I think you'll find something that you like. So until next time, don't forget to design, make, and play. Have fun and great new stuff.